Hey everybody and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about Azure Arc and Octopus Deploy. Now just a few housekeeping things before we get started today. If you're watching this live, please do use um, the question section wherever you are watching, whether that be Zoom, whether that be Slack or whether that be YouTube. Um, please answer your, ask your questions. We will have time at the end of the session. We will be grabbing your questions and trying to answer whatever um, we didn't cover during the presentation. This will also be um, on demand, so don't worry about recording it or keeping any notes. You will have a chance to go back because it will be on demand on several places as well. So there is that opportunity to rewatch this if you wanted to. Now, we also have our Slack channel. So if you head over to octopus.com slash Slack, you can join in the chat there and the community. We'd really love to have you as part of our community over on Slack as well. And for anybody watching on Zoom, when the session ends, you will get a feedback forum and we would really appreciate it if you could spend a few minutes filling that feedback in. It tells us whether this webinar has been good for you and it also asks about future webinar suggestions. And again, we'd love your input onto what we need to cover in the future. Now, I want to introduce my guest and this is a long term friend and ex colleague, Thomas, that is joining me today. So it's fantastic to have him here today. Thomas, how are you doing? Hey, Sarah, thank you very much uh, for having me today. Yeah, it's uh, great uh, to speak to you again and uh, even present with you again. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm doing really well. I hope you too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thomas, do you want to introduce yourself to the audience for anybody that doesn't know who you are? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I work as a senior program manager uh, for Azure Hybrid at Microsoft. Um, so I basically look at our end-to-end -end hybrid cloud scenarios with Azure Arc and Azure, our Azure Stack portfolio, um, as well as everything around this, right? Also including stuff like Windows Server. Um, and you will learn that there is a lot of uh, hybrid and multi-cloud stuff going on at Microsoft. Um, so uh, yeah, that that's what I'm doing. Awesome. So let's get started because today's agenda is packed where Thomas is going to talk to you about all the fun stuff that Azure Arc can enable you to. And then we're going to have some demos around that. And then I'll take over and I'll show you how to incorporate a bit of Octopus Deploy into the Azure Arc story as well. So let me pull up your slides, Thomas, and we can get started. Awesome. So um, again, like I, I promised you, I will do a lot of demos here, but um, I also want to quickly um, give you a little bit of background, everyone. Um, what is about our Azure hybrid story and why are doing Arc and what is Arc? Uh, so I have a couple of slides, bear with me with that, but then we will dive directly into demo and I'll show you uh, a lot of different things we can do with Azure Arc. Again, we will not manage to show you everything because there's just so much, um, but um, I, I, I took some examples uh, which we can look at. So first of all, um, if you look at hybrid, uh, if you look at Azure in general, um, Azure is really built uh, from the ground up to be hybrid, uh, meaning that we have obviously many different services uh, for a very long time. If you think about Azure Active Directory, which can be combined uh, in, and run in a hybrid mode with Active Directory on-premises. Uh, if you look at monitoring stuff we have, uh, security stuff we had, and so on for a very, very long time. Uh, we run in a hybrid environment. However, uh, we realize that it's becoming even more important, right? And being a hyperscale cloud doesn't mean just to have like big regions everywhere around the globe, but also like really bringing this cloud experience and the benefits of the cloud really until to the edge, right? And so I think that is that is what we're doing. And so we have many, many different cases. Uh, and again, I cannot talk about too much. We will really focus on Azure Arc. But obviously, if you look at IoT, we have a really big suite of IoT services and sets to manage your devices, update them, get data in, and use, for example, machine learning and stuff like that. We also have our Azure Stack portfolio, which really is a, now a group, a family of so solutions, which you can actually uh, deploy on-premises or edge locations where you need hardware. And then really, when it comes to like hybrid cloud and multi-cloud, is where we see Azure Arc coming in. So you're able to, like, for example, deploy Azure services anywhere, meaning that we have heard from customers telling us, hey, we cannot, like, we would like to build, uh, to, to take advantage of Azure services, uh, but there are reasons why we need to run on premises or at another cloud provider. 
meaning we cannot really use them. Now, with Azure Arc, we're actually solving this, and I will show you about uh, a little bit about that uh, a little bit later on. And secondly, what we also hear from customer where Azure Arc comes in is managing all these different locations, making sure that they're compliant and secure, and that we can actually go out and, and manage like our infrastructure, right? So that is uh, the single control plane with Azure Arc. And again, I just want to stress this enough, like what we do with Azure Arc specifically is really uh, bringing the security and governance, the, the developer practices and apps and machine learning, which we have in Azure, but also bring them to other locations, such as like when you run on premises using, for example, our Azure Stack portfolio, VMware, or, or just even physical servers and Kubernetes clusters, um, or even other cloud providers. So really, Azure Arc really brings that brings that all together and allows us to do that. Now, what can Azure Arc do, right? Uh, I mean, again, like this this is very was a very high level, but what we're offering with Azure Arc is really um, to bring to allow you to connect infrastructure such as servers, Kubernetes clusters, uh, your VMware environment, your Azure Stack environment, uh, your System Center environment, and connect these up to the Azure control plane and use that control plane. So for example, servers show up in the Azure portal as if they would be uh, Azure resources. And you can start taking advantage of all the management tooling uh, we get with Azure. Um, so that is one part. The other part is that we can bring Azure services not only to your on-premise infrastructure, but also to other uh, locations uh, such as, as other cloud providers. So we will look at both of these scenarios today um, uh, to go forward with that. But first, um, actually, instead of just like showing you slides, let me quickly show you like a demo on, on how that looks like, right? So if you're familiar with Azure, um, you can um, see that you have obviously your resources here. You can see here I have my virtual machines and all of that. Um, like if I go to my all resources page, you can see here, everything in Azure is basically an object, right? So this has a name, it has a type, uh, it's part of a resource group, it's deployed in locations, part of the description. Um, and we did a very great, the, the, the Azure Resource Manager team did a very great job of building that control plane to manage like really these cloud resources at scale. Now our customer told us like, hey, this is great, but I also have resources running outside of Azure. How can I manage these? And that is exactly where Azure Arc comes in. Um, so let me quickly show you, if I go to Azure Arc, I go basically to the Azure Arc Center. And that is the place where you manage all of your Azure Arc uh, resources, uh, deployments, and so on, right? So you can see here on the, on the left side here, if you look at infrastructure, for example, you can see what you actually can connect. So this can be things like Azure Stack HCI, Kubernetes clusters, your Windows or Linux servers running virtual or physical, your SQL servers, your vCenters, your system center environments. We can basically connect these up uh, to Azure. So let's have a look at servers, for example. So what I did here, these are already servers, which I already um, connected um, to the Arc uh, port or to the Azure portal using Azure Arc. And the only thing I need to do basically is I need to download an agent, install that agent, and then run a command to register that system with my Azure tenant and my Azure subscription, right? Super straightforward. I can also do that at scale. Um, and then the resource will immediately show up here um, in the portal. Now, what I can also show you here is I have a, I use tags. Um, but these are normal Azure tags. So we have an Azure, we, call, we have a data center tag. And you can see here, I use the locations. So some of them are running um, at my home, some of them running uh, in other data center locations, and some of them even at other cloud providers, which is pretty cool. So I immediately know where these resources are running. So if I have a look at the resource here, let's go um, to one of my servers here. Um, let me quickly show you. Let's, let's take the app CR1 here. If I click on App Seer One, this is a server running in my local um, uh, place, if you will, or in this case, even at another cloud provider somewhere in Germany. And you can see here, it looks like an Azure resource. Um, so we have a, it's part of a resource group, it's part of a subscription. Um, and so I can take advantage of 
things like the activity log and, and role-based access control, right? So I, because it's now resource, it's really like similar to managing an Azure resource, I can do that now um, exactly the same way. Now, if I look, I get also some more information here, which are specific to Azure Arc enabled servers. So for example, I can see here that there's the name of the computer. They can also realize that this one is uh, joined to a uh, active directory domain locally, which doesn't need to be. It can also be a work group server. There's no dependencies on any domain joins or anything like that. And you can also see that it's actually this server now is running Windows Server 2019 uh, data center edition. Now I get some cool stuff here, what I can do. Uh, let me see if I enable this. Um, so for example, I can go and look at the logs for that specific system. So I can go and, and do some queries around these logs uh, if I have to. I can also um, look at insights, for example, let me quickly go through this. Uh, so if I enable this, I can actually start monitoring that machine using Azure Monitor, which is pretty cool. I can also use tools now to manage this, right? One thing is, for example, which you should take care of is update management. Now, you can see here that I, if I click on update management for that machine, I can see that I'm not compliant, meaning I have a critical or security updates which are not installed. And if I scroll down, I can actually see what updates on this machine are missing. So I can basically go and like say, hey, let's change this and schedule an update deployment. I can then go and say test. Uh, this is a name for 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 that deployment. Again, um, you might choose what you want. Uh, you can define a maintenance window and reboot options. So reboot if required, for example, seems to be a good um, uh, option here. And then you can schedule this. Now I can schedule this and say I want to update now, meaning it will do like that between like five and ten minutes. It will start the deployment job. But since we are in the middle of a demo here probably not the most clever thing to do. And also, if you're an admin, you probably don't want to do schedule this during the business hours, right? So you can schedule this for later um, and, and choose another time. And you can also go and make this a recurring activity. So you can say, hey, well, I want to update my server every Tuesday night, for example, and I can do that. And then I can also choose some classifications. This is now specific because this is a Windows machine. I can say do the same little thing with Linux machines as well. I can include and exclude different updates. And if I need to, I can run a pre and a post script. And at the end, I review that job and would create that job. And then it would allow me to update that machine. Now, you might say, Thomas, well, <laughs> this is now uh, great, but I have 200 servers, I have 1,000 servers. I, I don't want to do that for every single server. And you're absolutely right. So if you click here on Manage Multiple Machines, this will take you to the update management solution in Azure. And this is really where you can now see that this isn't like the update management solution we have Azure Arc is nothing necessarily new. It's just a similar one we use for our Azure machines. You can use now for on-premises machines as well. And so you can see here, here is the list of all machines I connected. Some of them are Azure VMs, some of them are non-Azure VMs, some of them are Linux, some of them are Windows machines. Again, some of them are probably virtual, some of them are physical. And you can here you schedule an update deployment as well with the only difference being that here I can now select a group of machines instead of just doing a single machine. Um, and I can also do things like dynamic groups based on, on tagging and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Um, I can also get like software inventory, uh, change tracking for these machines, and then also use, for example, policies, which are like, like if you think about it from the Windows side, like group policies on steroids, right? I can go and audit my machines. So in this case, if you look at it from a perspective of if you're responsible for compliance, you can say all your machines, like everything in your Azure environment, as well as everything connected with Azure Arc needs to have secure password settings. So that is a policy I did over my whole Azure environment. And you can see that it shows up for that specific server. And you can see here that this specific server is not compliant. Now, as a server admin, I see now that I'm not compliant with my company's policy, and I can actually see why I'm not compliant, right? So you can see, hey, there is a, this policy uh, initiative, which is has these different types of policies here, uh, which I need to be compliant. And you can see here, there are two of them, which I'm not compliant with. Uh, for example, uh, maximum password age and so on. 
And we provide you with uh, some built-in uh, policies and initiatives you can assign. Those can be um, technical ones like these. Um, you can also modify and, and, and edit these and create your own. But we also offer you some like industry specific ones. So for example, if you're following ISO or other things, um, we already have things for that to make it easier for you that you can actually reach your compliance state uh, there. One thing I want to show you is also the security part because that is super interesting. So you can take advantage of Microsoft Defender uh, for cloud, and in this case, specifically for server. Uh, and this gives you security recommendations. Uh, we give you that for Azure machines, but also for on-prem machines. And we can even give you security incidents. Luckily, as I'm um, hopefully, uh, there is no, no security incident, no alert. But if we would find something, we would obviously alert you and make sure that you're aware of that. So you get all the power we get from our Microsoft Defender solution. You get that not just for your Azure VMs, but also for your servers running on-prem. And then I want to, last but not least, I want to show you, again, there's much, much more to talk about. But last but not least, I want to show you uh, the Windows Admin Center extension. Um, so this is pretty new. So if I go to my file server, um, you can see here, this is, by the way, the same thing. It's also running. This one really runs now on-prem in my location. If I go to Windows Admin Center, um, I can just hit the Connect button. Now, Windows Admin Center is usually a tool which you need to install locally in your data center, and then from there, connect to your machine, and it allows you to do web-based editing. And it basically replaces all these MMCs and to, like kind of like classic tools you had on your Windows server, and it allows you to do remote management, right? Now, however, if you have machines everywhere, like if you have, like if you, for example, we have customers running retail stores, edge locations, branch offices, and stuff like that, Net, having network connectivity can be hard sometimes, right? So it's like you need to set up all these VPNs and connection to it, and then maybe RTP in and all that. Now with Azure Arc, we just install the Arc agent. It shows up. Doesn't matter where the server is running, as long as it has connection to the Azure APIs. It can be done over a proxy or a private link, and it will show up here. And then you can use, as I showed you, like update management and and other uh, management tools. Um, which allows me to manage my server at scale. Now, at one point, though, I might need to troubleshoot something, or I need to do something which is not that easy, um, so or, or figure something out. So I can actually take advantage of Windows Admin Center. It's now in the Azure portal, so you don't need to install anything by yourself. Um, the only thing you need to do is, like, when you do it the first time, there's a Setup button. You hit that Setup button, and this will take a couple of minutes to basically install the Windows Admin Center extension. So if I hit connect here, um, this will now open up the Windows Admin Center experience directly within the Azure portal. I will need to provide some local credentials for that server. And if I then sign in, you can see that I get the full Windows Admin Center experience, if you will, which you would have on-prem if you would install it um, exactly in the Azure portal, right? So you get like all this information here about the system. You get real-time data, for example, of CPU utilization, memory, uh, Ethernet, network connectivity, uh, disk performance. But if you look at the left side, you can also see all the extensions like to manage your certifi certificates on the machine, devices, we'll have a look at event uh, logs directly, um, edit local user and groups, but then also do some fancy stuff. Like for example, um, uh, go and like have a look at performance monitor. Now this is the new web-based performance monitor which you get with Windows Admin Center which allows you to go through the performance counter and real-time data to troubleshoot uh, what is happening with, on the machine, for example. And you can use that now directly in the Azure portal. How cool is that? You also get a web-based registry editor. You can run a remote PowerShell connection to the server. So if you need to run some PowerShell uh, interactive PowerShell commands, you can do that too. And you could even up, open up a remote desktop connection, right? So you just go to the Azure portal, and then you can like, if you still need to connect, if all these management tools do not help you and you need to log into the machine, you can do that. And so I'm now securely connected uh, from home um, in my Azure portal and then back to my machine, right? This machine could be running anywhere in the world. There's no need for me to have a public IP address in that sense, open any ports from the outside world. It's all done over that agent without going traffic over port 443 encrypted 
to the Azure APIs. And again, you can also use proxies and you can use private link connection if you have VPNs and express route, if you want to go that send that traffic over this. So super cool thing. Um, uh, and again, you can do much, much more with server. Um, I want to show you one more thing, uh, and that's about Kubernetes clusters, right? So I can do the similar thing not just with servers, but also with my Kubernetes clusters. And these can be like different Kubernetes clusters. This can be AKS running on premises. Uh, we offer that as a service on HCI and Windows Server. But you can also run this, um, like for example, connect your OpenShift cluster or your um, EKS cluster uh, running in AWS, for example, as well, and then start using the same management experience. And you can see here, you get, for example, monitoring uh, as well here, but this time, really on, you can turn this on and we'll do more on container-based monitoring. It will like show your pods, your containers running and all that. Um, and again, you can use policies and security and all that good stuff. One thing I wanna show you though is GitOps. So we have a GitOps integration, not just for AKS running in Azure, but also your Arc-enabled Kubernetes. So what GitOps allows me to do is I can say, hey, here's a configuration stored in a Git repository. Uh, and this is now applied to the cluster. So I did this here with an application. So the application basically is stored in this Git repo. This can be a public or private Git repo. And it basically said, hey, you go every three seconds and see if there is a new version of this application um, there. And if it is, if there is, you basically download it and change it and basically update the application running on that Kubernetes cluster. So pretty simple, like if you're familiar with GitOps and Flux, um, then, this is exactly this, what you can do. Uh, but you can set it up super easily from the Azure portal. Now let's have a look for those, like what that means. So here's my um, sample application. You can see here, I took all my web design skills um, to basically design it. And it says, hello Zurich right now, let's change that. So the change I'm gonna do is I go to my Git repo and you can see here, here's the actual application. And then under releases, I have my prod release and you have a YAML file here. Um, which I can basically have a look. And you can see here in the YAML file, I could now change what container images are we using, like how many replicas do I run? Uh, and we also did a, a, a message value. So you can see here, it says, hello, sir. Now, don't do this at home because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna directly commit to the master branch. And I'm gonna say, hello, Azure Arc, instead of hello, Zurich. So um, again, I'm going like full rogue here. Um, so I'm still gonna do a commit message, um, but again, I'm gonna do the main and master branch. And again, obviously, if you would do that in production, you would use different branches and approval steps to go through this, right? You would not obviously do it like that. And the advantage is already, you can now see who did with what change and what was the change exactly. Um, so that is the advantage of the Git, uh, GitOps scenario right you get with this and so again if i go back here this would now go and I, I configured this to be three seconds just for demo purposes in production you would obviously not try to do that every three seconds so if i go back to the application and i talked long enough and i do a quick refresh you can see here now it says hello arc now you would say again well thomas i could also directly update the application on that uh, kubernetes cluster yes First of all, you would need to obviously have network access, like a VPN directly to push the application there. But then um, you, you also, the advantage now is you can actually see all the changes and exactly see the code changes which are made to this application. And last but not least, think about if you not just have one uh, Kubernetes cluster, but like hundreds or thousands running the same application, you could now go with this and basically update the applications within seconds or minutes on all of these clusters uh, in time, right? So that is pretty cool stuff here. Uh, but let me go back to the slides now. Uh, I'll have a little bit more to show you. So again, this is how we're actually doing this um, really, really quickly. I just wanna highlight that when you're an Azure customer, you use tools and experiences as we call it, like the portal and PowerShell and CLI to actually interact with Azure Resource Manager. That's where all the magic happens, like role-based access control, tagging, and all that good stuff and much, much more. Um, on top of that, we also offer our management services such as monitoring, update management, backup, security, and so on. Um, and this was basically really done for Azure resources, right? But we know that customers also have existing uh, environments. 
So for these, they usually use to have uh, like local tools, like local admin tools and so on. Uh, and those are fine. You can still keep using them. But what Azure Arc really does now, it connects these systems um, to the Azure Resource Manager, and it basically enables them to use uh, um, like to you for customers to use the management services. And again, I'm showing you all of this in the portal, but you could also use APIs and PowerShell and the CLI to do the same, same thing. Now, when we talk about infrastructure, I showed you there is Arc-enabled servers, there's Arc-enabled Kubernetes. We also have a special Arc-enabled SQL server. This allows you to existing SQL servers and then give you security recommendations for that. Uh, we also have management for Azure Stack HCI, but also for Arc-enabled VMware vSphere. So you can do VM lifecycle management and self-service directly from the Azure portal on your VMware environment running basically anywhere, right? So that is, that is pretty cool. Um, so this really, if you look at this, what this provides, if you're an IT admin or operations person or even a developer, you get this consistent experience of like doing operations, governance, and security. And again, it doesn't matter where these services are running, if they're running in Azure or outside of Azure. So let's quickly talk to the second part and then uh, before I'm done, talk about Arc-enabled services. So Arc-enabled services um, allow us to deploy Azure services anywhere. And the idea behind that is really like, as I mentioned before, their customers, they like our Azure service. Let's say, for example, Azure SQL Managed Instance. So they really like that service, but um, they want to use it on premises. And um, because they need like that uh, regulatory um, uh, reasons for it or latency network, like latency reasons or no network bandwidth um, or not reliable networking. So they need to run it actually like local. And absolutely, uh, we get that, right? So what we do is if a, if a customer cannot run an Azure service in Azure, we bring the Azure service to the customer. And that is what we're doing with Arc-enabled services. Um, what do we actually allow with that? So what we have currently in preview, for example, is the Azure Arc-enabled application services, meaning you can run app service, function, logic apps, API, and event grid not just on premises um, and in Azure, but also at other cloud providers, right? All you need for that is a Kubernetes cluster connected, um, as I showed you, with Arc enabled Kubernetes. Um, and then this allows you to actually then deploy these. And I'm going to show you how, how that looks like and how that works. Now, that said, um, this is now obviously a very cool scenario because if you're building applications and if you're architecting applications, um, you obviously want to take advantage usually of past services, right? That was like, well, in, if I deploy in the cloud, that's great. But if you want to run on Azure past services or any, and like also, that's also true for other cloud providers, until we had Azure Arc, you were basically limited to like just run it in Azure. But then what do you do if the application also needs to run on-prem um, uh, and, and other cloud providers. Then there are two options. You do different architectures for the one in Azure and the one on-prem and maybe the one in other cloud providers, or you go into one single architecture, but then you need to, need to go back and just use VMs or containers, and then you cannot really take advantage of, of the higher level PaaS services. Now with this, you can still architect your solution on these PaaS services, but run them not just in Azure, but really anywhere. Now, speaking about these application services, that's great, but you obviously also need databases. So one thing which we have generally available is um, Azure SQL Managed Instance. And again, this runs as an Azure service on premises. So we also take, like, it's, it's easy to update. It's really delivered as a service. And again, also that it runs on a Kubernetes cluster, um, which can be AKS on premises, but also other, pro, other uh, Kubernetes distributions, right? And we, similar to that, we also offer Azure Machine Learning uh, as well. And obviously, you can imagine that we're working on more services. But let me quickly show you how that looks like in the Azure portal. So if I go back to the portal, I want to quickly show you something. You might have seen that on the management, we have this thing called custom locations. So I created two custom locations. And a custom location is nothing else than basically an extension uh, and the naming so I have created two. One is called other cloud provider zero one, and the other one is Tom's data center zero one. 
So that is like my naming for this. And again, I can choose whatever these are. And you can see here, if I go all the way back, these are linked to Kubernetes clusters, right? So these are two little Kubernetes clusters I have connected using Azure Arc. So when I now go all the way down and I want to deploy a new app service web app, for example, I go to app service, I hit on create, similar as I would do, exactly the same way as I would do if I would want to create in Azure. I would obviously need to provide a uh, resource group. So let's select this one here. Um, I would give it a name. And you can see here right now, everything is similar as in Azure. It's the same thing, right? I, I, it's actually exactly the same. But now with the difference here on the regions, if I now select regions, you can see here, I would see all my Azure regions, which are available to me. But if I scroll all the way on the top, you can see here that the custom locations pop up, like the ones I created, like Tom's data centers here one and all the cloud providers here one. So now let's select my local data center here. And you can see here, there's a slight change in the URL. Um, but now I can actually go and deploy that app, that web app directly on my Kubernetes cluster running in my data center or my home location for now. So I think that is that is absolutely cool uh, thing to do. And again, if we go back, you can see that this is not only for, um, for web apps, but also for SQL managed instance and others uh, as well. Now, that said, obviously, I again, I cannot stress this enough. I showed you this in the portal, but this also works with your other Azure tooling. So if you're using Bicep, for example, if you're using ARM templates, if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can do the sim same thing as well, right? And deploy to these custom uh, locations. So if we go back to the slides, this now allows developers and cloud architects to basically use existing tooling and practices and again, deploy these applications anywhere, right? And take advantage of servers, of Kubernetes clusters, take advantage of past services such as Azure SQL or web apps or all, all, all the other application services such as functions for serverless uh, and logic apps, for example, and run them, again, not just on premises, but even at other cloud providers as well. And if you don't have a Kubernetes cluster, I want to quickly show you a solution to that. And I mentioned it already. You can run AKS on premises. So what we are offering is Azure Stack HCI, which is our hyper-converged infrastructure solution. And this allows you to basically run VMs such as Windows and Linux VMs and install your classic applications which need to run in VMs. But then we also offer AKS, our Azure Kubernetes service, on Azure Stack HCI. And by the way, also on Windows Server. And then you can run your containerized apps, your containers, but also our Azure Arc enabled services as I just showed you. And then you can run your cloud native applications on top of that and all managed through Azure Arc. So you get this like, if you want to, you can have a full end-to-end -end Microsoft solution um, uh, if, you, if you want that. So my last thing I wanna highlight is a little bit like give you something which you can check out. So I really recommend that you check out the hybrid and multi-cloud scenario in the cloud adoption framework. This is really a, a proven guidance, basically, how you implement a hybrid and multi-cloud into your cloud environment. Uh, we give you reference architectures. We give you the uh, well-architected framework for your applications, technical documentations, best practices, and also Microsoft Learn modules to, to make sure that you know uh, what is going on. So I highly recommend um, that you check this out. And again, I just showed you a very small part of Azure Arc. Uh, there's much, much more to discover, um, but I'm sure you check that out and, and make sure you you, you see what, what's possible. So with that, I wanna say thank you and back to Sarah. Awesome, thank you so much for that, Thomas. I think the power of Azure Arc has grown massively since we first saw it. Um, you were showing off the Windows Admin Center extension and I think that's, that's great because it means you don't have to open up another window. You don't have to have something else open. You're already in the tab. You can you just use it there. Um, and I actually I don't know if this was announced just um, this year, the integration with VMware um, and then SCVMM and being able to deploy uh, VMs straight from the Azure portal to that cluster or whatever may be sitting externally. That's just fantastic, I think. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Oh, these are very new capabilities. Like, so the VMware part we announced a couple of months back, but uh, the VMM um, uh, 
VMM integration we just announced at the hybrid day, uh, which was on June 15th this year. Uh, so yeah, those are pretty new capabilities. And again, there's a lot more to come. Yeah, awesome. Um, so I'm going to take over now because I want to talk a bit about Octopus Deploy. So let me show you my slides, folks. So for anybody that is not familiar with Octopus Deploy, what Octopus Deploy is, is a DevOps automation platform. We take care of the CD part of your CI CD pipeline and try and simplify those complex deployments that you have where you're trying to automate um, lots of different things to different environments. Now, we can run on lots of applications and lots of infrastructure, whether your legacy, and that's maybe your Windows servers, your own data center, um, but we can also run on that modern um, infrastructure as well and cloud providers. So we support um, all the major cloud providers as well. But what I really want to focus on today is runbooks. And runbooks are great for helping you to automate your routine or your maintenance tasks or even incident management operation tasks as well. The thing, fun thing about runbooks is you can start to deploy your infrastructure. You can start to really get into infrastructure as code and build out everything in there. So making Octopus the kind of go-to tool for your deployments and your infrastructure deployments as well. And automation is fantastic because it, like it says, it helps you with those daily tasks, those occasional tasks and helping you save time from avoiding, you know, having to do those daily tasks and you can focus much more on the cooler technology. Maybe that's looking at your Azure Arc strategy and onboarding everything there as well. So if I share my screen, I want to show you how you can actually use a runbook inside Octopus Deploy to start to onboard some of your servers into Azure Arc. So here we are inside our Octopus environment, and this is the environment you would use whether you're running Octopus in your own environment or you're using our cloud environment. Now, there's a bunch of things that you need to do when you first set up Octopus. Um, if you look at, say, your infrastructure, you can um, add in your cloud accounts. So I've connected my AWS account here, which is Maybe counterintuitive what, what I'm going to show you, but I have a lot of resources inside AWS and I want to start to onboard some of them into Azure Arc. Hence the reason we're starting with my AWS environment. If I have a look at my library, I have my variable sets, which help me define information that I need to provide to my deployments or my runbooks for tasks that I want to carry out. Now I've got ones for my AWS environment, I've got ones for my Azure environment, and then I've got some global variables as well. If we have a look inside my Azure one, we'll see that I have a couple of things defined in here. So I have like my Azure subscription ID, my tenant ID, my log workspace, um, my service principle information. And all of this is kind of starred out. It's all hidden because I have defined this as a secret variable. Um, and you can't see this, or it's a sensitive variable where the information is stored inside Octopus, but me as a human person cannot get that information. Octopus has access to it, so it can call it when it's in a deployment, but I can't see that. So I can um, steal that and use it somewhere else that I shouldn't necessarily need to use it from. If I head on over to projects, I have a project called AWS CloudFormation because I've been learning a bit about AWS CloudFormation and trying to automate things there. Now I have a bunch of runbooks in here. I have ones that um, create storage accounts, create virtual machines, and um, delete all of that infrastructure. But I also have a couple here that show me um, how to install the Azure Arc agent and the log analytics agent on my Windows or my Linux machines. So if I head into one of these, we can see that I have a couple of steps here for that. So my first one is to install the Azure Arc agent. And then the second one is to actually ensure that my log analytics agent is installed as well. If we dive in to this first deployment step, what it's ultimately doing is issuing a PowerShell command to any of the infrastructure deployment targets that I have specified to actually install that Azure Arc agent. Now, it's a very simple bit of PowerShell script. And if I switch over to my Azure portal, I'll show you where I've got that script from. So here I am in the Azure portal, and I have a bunch of Azure Arc servers enabled already and connected to my subscription. If I click on the Add button, I get a couple of options to see how to onboard my servers into Azure Arc. 
Now I could do a single server and I would join, generate a script here. I could do add multiple servers and generate a script, or I have a couple of other options around things that are already onboarded via update management or potentially even Azure Migrate. In this case, I want to generate a script for adding multiple servers. So I click on generate script and I'm asked a bunch of questions. I'm asked a bunch of questions about where I want to onboard these Azure Arc um, servers to. So if I pick my subscription, if I pick my um, resource group, I pick my region, and then I can define the operating system. So that's why I have two scripts. I have one for the Windows and one for Linux. If I leave this at Windows and click Next, I have the option here to define a service principle. Now the service principle allows me to automate the onboarding of it. I don't have to share my personal Azure login or anything like that. My team could use this as well because this is a shared principle secret. So if I pick on one of these and click next, I can generate tags like Thomas was showing us earlier on. He's got a lot of tags for a lot of his environments. So it helps you to define what's going on there and keep an eye on it. So you can define a bunch of tags in here if you wanted, and they would be included in the script. And the last screen actually gives us that script. So what I've done is I've pre-created that. I've taken a copy of it and I've put it into my Octopus environment because Rather than copying and pasting this across all of my servers in AWS, I want to deploy it automatically. And that's ultimately that script that I've got inside my runbook here. The second step of my um, deployment is actually just onboarding the log analytics step as uh, the agent as well. Now that's a similar process to generating that via the um, Azure portal. And I've got that in here as well, another PowerShell script. Now, there's a couple of ways I could obviously do that log analytics step. You could do it through um, policy. So once you've onboarded your Azure Arc agent, you can then apply an Azure policy that installs the log, uh, the log analytics workspace agent. I'm just doing it in this step. Now, I could click run and manually trigger this um, run book to go off and deploy um, these two steps to my deployment targets and my infrastructure. However, what I've actually done is created a trigger inside Runbooks. So I have this scheduled to run automatically. So it'll run every night of the week at 9 p.m. for the Linux one and the Windows one will run at 10 p.m. And this way, anybody that's deploying infrastructure to my environment or to um, our environment um, doesn't necessarily need to know or need to remember to install the Azure Arc agent this runbook would trigger and catch it for us. So we can have that uh, manual deployment if we wanted to through the runbook by clicking on run, or we have the trigger that will run automatically and keep all our environment compliant with what we're actually trying to do and have the Azure Arc agent installed on our machines and been able to leverage all of the power and all of the coolness that Thomas actually showed us. And I think this is a good use case because I also have a, a run book that can deploy my AWS CloudFormation template and build out a, a virtual machine for me in Azure um, AWS. And during that script, during that CloudFormation script, I've also got my Azure Arc agent being onboarded. So there's a couple of ways you can do this through um, Octopus Deploy and through the power of runbooks. But I just wanted to show you some quick demos um, to be able to take, take advantage of the power of Azure Arc and Octopus together. So Thomas, I think we've both done our, our little bits about presentation now. I want to get involved with the people who are watching. So um, I'm gonna look through the Q&A and we'll get to some of your questions now. So please do fire your questions into wherever you're watching and we'll grab them now. So Thomas, that's our presentations done and hopefully the audience has all enjoyed that. Um, we have a few questions from the audience for you around Azure Arc. So um, the first one is, um, with Azure Arc, do you still need a on-premise hybrid worker to execute the pre and post script? I think this question came in when you were demoing the update management um, piece as well. Yes, that's actually an excellent question. Um, so yes, if you're um, doing update management, as I showed in the demo, you can, um, like before the update schedule or starts actually installing the updates, you can run a pre-script and then you can run a post-script after the, after the fact. And yes, so this is still using the same technology as we had, but it does everything in the background for you. So you will already have 
that with the arc agent you already have also everything else which you needed uh, enabled in this in this case um yeah Awesome. Um, I know that pre and post script is, is quite handy because I've used it a few times to stop and start services on some servers before applying the patches. So it um, saves me being up in the morning to do that. Um, another question we got, um, and I'm not sure if you can talk to this um, or not, but someone was asking about, is there any comparisons between Azure Arc and OpenStack um, in terms of what it does? So this is a, a, I would say, a difficult uh, comparison uh, uh, to compare in mm -hmm. that sense uh, because they're, they're doing a little bit of different things there. Mm -hmm. um, when when it comes to like OpenStack, it really like uh, allows you to run things um, on premises on on these cases, but you don't get necessarily the cloud connectivity if, if you run like multiple envi environments and also cloud environments. You will not be able to manage these uh, uh, in a single pane of glass. Um, it, you, for example, with OpenStack, you cannot necessarily ma manage Azure resources, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like as an example. Yeah. The other thing is also like when it comes down to offering uh, these past services we have in Azure in a consistent way. That's also something uh, it, um, it, can, it cannot be done. So, but. Like it's not, I, in this case, I would not say it's either I use this or this, but you can use Azure Arc actually with OpenStack, right? You can, like, mm -hmm. if you run your servers and your systems on OpenStack, you can basically um, also connect uh, these to Azure using Azure Arc and then start managing these or deploy Azure services on top of OpenStack. So it's more a complementary solution than a, a, a competitor in that sense. But it's okay. a very good question. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, so uh, there was another question that came in around um, the kind of feature comparison between Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes versus full blown Azure Kubernetes service or EKS. Are they comparative or is there differences or is that not even a relevant point to be asking because it, it really isn't? They are no, it, difference. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's absolutely a good question. Uh, absolutely. So there's a couple of things there. Um, so first of all, with our Azure Kubernetes service running in Azure, obviously you get the full blown Azure, like the Kubernetes experience mm -hmm. we have as a managed like service running in Azure. Uh, you get this easy update and management of the Kubernetes cluster of the worker nodes um, of Kubernetes itself, right? Just as an example, and you get this, this management running experience. Now with Azure mm -hmm. Arc, what you get is you connect your cluster and you can start managing in similar ways, like the security pieces, monitoring, GitOps integration with Flux, for example, uh, which I demoed. Mm -hmm. um, those work similar or in, as, as it would do in AK, as it does in AKS. Also, same thing, by the way, with policies and stuff like that. Uh, there's also much, much more behind it, by the way, like when it comes to like uh, identity integration, um, for example, uh, yeah. there's much, much more I didn't show. <laughs> But for example, in that, in that case, you still need to, like if you need to run it, like if you use, for example, like OpenShift or another Kubernetes distribution and run that on-prem, you still need to like make sure that you upgrade these, you still need to do all of that work by yourself, right? Now, which is obviously like, if you want to do that, that that's fine. And you can still connect that by using Azure Arc and get these other benefits. Now, what we're seeing is a lot of interest in AKS on Azure Stack HCI and Windows Server, which allows you to basically run AKS on premises. So if you are interested in doing that, so that's, a, that's in, my, in my opinion, a very good solution because it allows you then to get this, this kind of like managed experience as you get from AKS running in, in the cloud, similar um, on-prem, right? So you will be able to, like we, we give you the updates for the worker nodes. Uh, we use, for example, like you can still it runs on Azure Stack HCI and Windows Server, but you can run Linux and Windows containers on it. So that's a big point if you're, especially if you're modernizing your application, some of them are Windows based, some of them are Linux based, both of them work. We are using our Mariner uh, Linux distribution, uh, which mm -hmm. is our internal one. Uh, so we give you these nodes and then we give you monthly updates. So we, we basically give you, okay, hey, here's a new version of it. And then you basically just hit the button and say, okay, new version, uh, deploy similar as you do um, in, in, in Azure as well. And that just also manage your worker nodes. Um, so that is like something where you then also can be connected using Azure Arc 
and then do the same things, but you get also that nice experience, easy deploy experience. So you can actually go out and say, hey, I need a new Kubernetes cluster. You just go and, and run through the wizard, for example, um, or use some commands to do a, a deploy a new cluster. Um, so that's that gives you this great then experience. So there's definitely differences. And we have a, a blog post and we're working on a support article um, to actually reference, hey, what are the, like, the differences right uh, between AKS uh, in Azure, but then also running AKS on premises? Because still, even though they're like very, very similar and they're becoming more similar day by day, <laughs> uh, there are certain things we cannot do because it not runs in our it does not run in our data centers, right? As an example, and it doesn't run in the same scale as, as we do AKS. So, for example, we cannot like force the underlying hardware to be upgraded and stuff like that. We can just give you the the bits, right? Uh, so, mm -hmm. but you, and, and things like that. So that, uh, but again, um, if you're interested in all of that, make sure you check out obviously Arc enabled Kubernetes, but then also. Um, AKS on Azure Stack HCI or Windows Server. That, that's how we call it today. Um, that gives you like an easy way to deploy it. You can deploy it on a single node Windows Server, on a clustered Windows Server, if you obviously want to have uh, high availability, or you can run it um, on, on Azure Stack HCI uh, as well. Cool. Um, we've also got a question around the cost of Azure Arc um, and where that sits and where it compares to other services. Fantastic question. I, I knew this was coming up. <laughs> so, um, first of all, the Azure Arc, uh, like the base set of Azure Arc, when you, for example, let's talk about servers, but we can also cover another other things um, uh, like Kubernetes clusters, which, which is fairly similar. But let's start talk about servers. Um, there's obviously a documentation page right away, like a pricing page where you can find everything in exact details to like, okay, what does cost? But to give you a high level overview, um, when you just connect the server, like you connect it up, you don't do anything with it, um, then there's basically no cost. We give you the base set, so you get like tagging, role-based access control, um, uh, all these things we give you for free, right? Um, and so you can you can get the visibility uh, for these servers. When you then start to use services similar like you do in Azure, like if you start using Defender uh, for cloud, if you start using monitoring, if you start... Um, um, other things in terms of which which are needed for log analytics, um, you will you, there will be some cost involved, right? So that that will add something to your cost. Again, like if you add it, like to for example, again, Defender for Cloud is like a typical great example. Mm -hmm. uh, update management, I think, I believe, and again, check out the website to be one hundred percent sure. But I believe that this is also a free offering. We mm -hmm. give you that to manage your service for free, uh, like the updates on your service for free. Uh, again, this can be Windows and Linux machines. Um, and then there's a couple of other things we give you for you. Also things I didn't show you. For example, we allow you to manage certificates on your servers. So you can store a certificate in a key vault and then deploy it on your servers as well. That, that I believe that's also for free. And then we have a couple of extensions you can use, which are for free. So there's a lot of free stuff, but make sure you check out. It really depends. And it's similar as in Azure, right? Like it, there's like some stuff uh, because we... The server you run by yourself on your own hardware uh, or in another cloud provider. So you already pay for that. Mm -hmm. But then for the services you enable, there are some of them are free and some of them they, they cost some money. Uh, so similar, that's by the way, similar for, for the Azure uh, Kubernetes service. Uh, when we then look at Azure Arc enabled services, it really depends on the service itself. There's a pricing model, like for example, let's say, Azure Arc enabled um, SQL managed instance. We have like a, a licensing thing there uh, as well, where you where you pay per like, uh, but but usage based as well, right? It's not that you need to like uh, the old school licensing models. And again, you can find more on our pricing pages uh, about this. Awesome. Um, we've also had a, a question about um, what is Azure Jump AR Jumpstart. <laughs> yep, that's a good one. Uh, I love that question. So. Um, Azure uh, Arc Jumpstart is a basically some guided scenarios where and highly automated scenarios. Um, these can be um, uh, like like if you want to try these things out, right? And sometimes you need to go through, you need to go through a tutorial, you need to go through documentation, how to set it up. And the Azure Arc Jumpstart makes it super easy if you want to try it out, right? Most of the time, it's like running two, three commands, um, and you can test it either on premises 
or then also at other cloud providers or even test it in Azure. So if you don't have, for example, a, um, a uh, like enough hardware or service to test on, but you have an Azure subscription, we can simulate your environment in Azure, kind of like a sandbox environment. So you can actually go out and test it there. Uh, you can then like have everything. Like you, there's like something called the Arc Box, for example, mm -hmm. uh, which allows you to, to deploy servers and Kubernetes clusters, and it does that more more or less automatically. So you don't even need the knowledge every to set the thing everything up, and then you can start playing around with it, right? If you've never worked with Kubernetes and you want to think that Azure Arc and Kubernetes, that's actually a good thing. So instead of setting up your own Kubernetes cluster at the beginning and everything, um, you can try out the Azure Arc Jumpstart. Um, again, there's different, a ton of different scenarios and, and, and things you can look up. Awesome. Thank you, Thomas. Um, I think there's one question for me here. So someone's saying, um, after seeing your demo on Runbooks, is there still an interest in using Terraform? So what I demoed in the Runbooks was a small script that would go and install the Azure Arc agent on my servers at scheduled interviews uh, intervals. Sorry. Um, that was just to catch any servers that had maybe been missed when we were onboarding them and building those servers so that we had the Azure Arc enabled agent on them. You could, of course, build that into your Terraform script. You could, of course, build it into your Azure Bicep script, the actual install of the agent. Um, you can do that with your AWS CloudFormation templates as well. So um, this was just a catch-all script that would make sure that none of our servers were missed with the Azure Arc enabled agent. Um, so there's there's multiple combinations of doing it. Um, so you could use it with your infrastructure as code if you wanted to, um, or you could do what I've done and, and done a run book to catch it after the fact of the install and stuff like that so um, there's lots of ways to do it um never enough time to demo everything that you want to demo obviously but um yeah lots of ways to do that um we're kind of running out of time now folks um what i want to do is say thank you to thomas for your time it was great having you here and um, great presentation um thank you for joining me thomas thank you very much sarah <laughs> it was a pleasure uh to be here and thank you everyone for watching Awesome. Um, what we've done is we've put together some resources where you can um, go and find out more about some of the things Thomas talked about, and some of the things I talked about. So um, head over to https um, colon slash slash opt dot to slash arc, not easy to read out. Um, and that'll take you to some information about what we talked about. And I'll also upload a copy of um, the slide deck if Thomas is okay with that. Um, and you can grab that as well. So yeah, thank you so much, everybody. It's been a pleasure. And hopefully we can see you in another webinar here at Octopus Deploy. But thank you for today.